Hey, what are you doing beneath my kitchen cabinet? Oh, you watched my video? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm just preparing some coffee here. I cannot start my day without coffee. I highly uh, recommend using coffee if you are tired. So the topic for this video is going to be what I actually spend my money on as, as a minimalist. Like actually, not like five types, five ways you can spend your money as a minimalist because you've got so much left, uh, which might actually not be the case depending on your lifestyle. So yeah, um, apart from what daycare costs and stuff like that, you know, coffee, Ugh, crap. I cannot do it, do that without spilling coffee everywhere. So um, I think most of it is food, like re for real, like food and uh, lifestyle products, you know, such as mm, things that just make you instantly happy and feel like, you know, you're pampering yourself, like, a, I don't know, some moisturizer, stuff like that. But nothing really special. And then travel would be the other thing that I would spend most money on. Like, I think travel is by far like, travel would be on uh, first place. And then comes, yeah, food, I guess. Because, you know, it's, it's hard to compare these because one is like an everyday thing and the other one is like a really special thing. By the way, speaking of food waste, look how stupid I am. This is my broccoli. And it's about to blossom, you know, when it blossoms, it starts to become yellow and look really cute. But you don't want that, you know, you want to eat it before it does that. But I didn't. Um, I didn't um, look after my broccoli. I forgot it in the fridge. You know, it happens to the best of us. It's just like, I don't want to be a hypocrite and say that I never produce food waste. Uh, this happens, and not all the time, but it, it happens occasionally. And... Um, so I try to resuscitate it here with like little water and um, broccoli actually sucks up this water quite nicely, you know, it really does. And now it's in my coffee. Yeah, great, because you know, whatever. So if you ever have uh, the problem that your broccoli is like really, uh, what does it say, S saggy, not as... Uh, like the tension of the broccoli went down and it it feels like it's dying, yeah. Uh, then you just put it in some water, like cut off the, the trunk here, cut off this part first and then put it into water and it will be fine or as good as fine, you know. You can still make, make soup out of it if you don't like broccoli like that. And I have to fish that out of my coffee. So yeah, that's one thing. You know, I know this is maybe a little bit weird, like probably people who are coming to this channel, like uh, new, new here, hello you, um, you might be thinking like, what is she doing? What is that? Is that a vlog? Is that, uh, what is that format? Like, I don't know, I call it like casual coffee, casual stuff, you know, because in between the videos that I script and that I think about a lot, I just want to do these yeah, more casual formats. Um, and it is meant as a kind of a slow thing. Like, you know, slow the thing, blah, blah, blah. Like, for real, just... We, we can take this time and we can watch something that is like condensed information. Or we can consume content that is more like an actual conversation where not every word is perfect and not everything is planned out and it's not about to learn something every other second. So this is what I want to do. I want to provide something that is a little bit, you know, just chill and see, that's what I mean. Okay, so coffee was the rest part. Where's the other one? Here is it. I still get rid of my espresso machine. Like I have like a big machine. Uh, I can make espresso with that, but the one part of it is not working and I have to repair it and I don't have time to repair it. So I'm not really sure if it's better to wait until I have the time to repair it and then really enjoy my espresso machine. 
or if I should get rid of it. And if I really feel, feel the need for it in the future, like get a new one. But then again, I got like a really good deal on this one. And, and instead of like paying 800 or 900 euros, I paid like 300. So it's like a really good deal. And yeah, I get that a lot of people think that it's too much for, for making espresso. But you don't know how much of a coffee addict I become when I am stressed out, when I need to work on some project that has like a, a due date. Yeah, you know, what's that? Um, deadline, a deadline. Yeah, due date is when you have the baby. Um, so when I have to actually work on something like every day work nice and stuff so i need a lot of coffee sometimes and i condone using coffee i'm not one of those eco influencers who are telling you that coffee is poison coffee is not poison come come on moderation is not poison um so anyway i've always been a coffee op addict but i could never afford a machine like that i always had like this shitty really shitty gadget machine and I bought a used one for like, I don't know, 25, 50 bucks. And it was just, it was just so, I hated that thing. I hated that thing. So for, for years, I, I was telling myself, I, I want to get like a really nice uh, and a pretty Vivienne. That is the one that I wanted. And that is the one that I have now. And now it's not working because I, I don't have time for maintaining it. It's so stupid. Yeah, so you see, um, minimalism doesn't mean that you got everything dialed in perfectly, or your belongings. Sometimes it's also just a mess as everything else. Anyway, um, food, food is the most thing. Food and these luxury items, I think it's luxury to have something like that as like an espresso machine or just beautiful everyday items. You know, you don't need something like this, you know? To be zero waste like you get these refills you know like you can uh, go to the bulk store and get refill on your uh, dishwashing detergent that is what we usually do and <laughs> yeah I mean I have this in pretty but it doesn't have to be pretty in fact let me show you my uh, boxes yeah you know see I got stuff like this which is like the pretty version. And then I have things like these, which I use for the freezer because I don't want to use glass. Yes, you can do it with glass, but it's just like an unnecessary risk. You know, it gets much more slippery when you take it out of the freezer and, you know, don't want to drop it on my foot. And I, I don't like the idea of it, you know, like polymers are good materials that you can use for certain things and if it works like there is nothing wrong with using polymers it's just wasteful to use them for for a single use uh, packaging that's just stupid that's just such a waste of good polymers i don't like the word plastic if you haven't noticed so anyway where is where is the milk I'm gonna try oat milk tomorrow, you know. Like, yeah, and food, when it comes to food, I really like organic food, you know, like the bees. No, you don't wanna, you don't wanna mess up the bees. So uh, I think that um, buying organic food whenever you can is really uh, useful because, you know, you can, you basically take part in nurturing biodiversity. And yeah, so I think that's pretty important. And also, I think it tastes better. And I will always pay more money for food that tastes better. Like, that's why I go to restaurants. Not now, but in general, I do. Like, every month, I go at least once to a restaurant and once to a cafe, cafe, coffee place. And I also just like to sit there and, and work, like, on a YouTube video, maybe. So, yeah, I just enjoy being outside of my own four walls and seeing something else. I really miss that actually. And I also like to have food that tastes so much better than the food that I make. Because yeah, I like, you know, I like trying out new recipes, 
but I don't have this talent of putting together new ingredients to something interesting, mind-blowing, like my food, food that I make usually just tastes okay, but it never tastes like restaurant food. So I like restaurant food. I like to go to restaurants and have like um, something that tastes so good that you want to actually make it at home, but you know you can't. That's, that's the kind of food that I like. That's the kind of stuff that I spend my money on. And um, yeah, for my kit, of course, also. And I think I said that in the more polished video uh, about what I spend money on, but um, my kit is actually like, that is not the part that is most expensive, you know, that would be travel. But the, uh, my kid, you know, I spend money on my kid um, in form of clothes, but it's easy, it's really easy to find cute clothes for your kid that are second hand. So I never buy new clothes for my kid, usually. Um, and when it comes to toys, it is just the same. Also, we do not have so many toys because, you know, minimalism and it's also a thing that I don't want in my room. I don't want my room full of toys. That is why my kid has her own room. And um, so toys, you can also get those secondhand. It's not really necessary. You can inherit them. Someone always has toys left from their childhood and they didn't even remember until you have a child and then they come along and give you that stuff. So yeah, plenty of things and not really necessary. But yeah, luxury items, travel, that kind of thing. That will be what I spend my money on. And I think that is also something very rewarding, you know, when you become a minimalist and um, all of a sudden, you know, you realize how much you shopped before. Like, I don't know what the number is, the exact number. Come on, let's look it up. And how many t-shirts does a person buy over the course of a year? Let's find out. This is a fair phone, yeah, uh, I'm not bragging, um, there's nothing to brag about, you know, phone, phone is phone, um, but I wanted to have this, I wanted to know what it is like, and I needed a new phone, and I said, uh, I don't want a phone that is not as fair as possible, so uh, the choice was between this and the shift phone, and I took this one because it had the, had the better features, in my opinion, and it was cheaper for the amount of RAM I think it had, or some other... Um, some other properties at the time. So how many t-shirts? This is a distribution. I don't want a distribution. I want an average over all, like from baby to grandma. Come on, that's not interesting. 40% of people in the UK buy from one to 10 pieces of clothing and 11 to 20 pieces are bought by 25%. And then 21 to 30 by 14 percent. So let's say you are amongst the 40 percent that buy between 11 and 30 pieces of clothing each year. I'm surely above that because of all of the things that I buy for my kid. Um, that is actually, you know, like that, that is a fair number, I think. Um, I'm not sure if shoes are included. But I think as a minimalist, like in one year, I think my lowest year, I bought two pieces of clothing in, in one year. Yeah, that was when I was like 26, I think, maybe 25. So it's definitely possible to do that if you have a lot of clothes that are like, okay, you know, something um gets worn out you have to replace it so you need to buy something and that counts but i think like if you buy if you come from buying 30 pieces of clothing which would be more than two a month so you would really notice the difference and i think i had even i had a phase where i was like um earning a bit of money for the first time um in, in the student job and i really enjoyed spending this money and I got myself a lot of new clothes, you know, like just wanted to look nice and bought some things for myself. And I think in this year I really went shopping more often. And I also did that to distract myself from stress, from uni, from all the things that I had to do. And it was just a way to relax for me during that time. So I can relate actually. I'm not like, 
my minimalism has not been super consistent throughout the time, you know, like it has always changed and sometimes I was more extreme and sometimes less and it just changed all the time. But it was always, my mindset was always a thing that I believed in, that having things does not make me more happy and that I constantly wanted less. So wherever I was, I always wanted to have less. And um, yeah, maybe that's a problem, I don't know, but you know, it's like it's something that you can always work on also. So it's not a bad thing. It's not like it's bugging me or anything, but it's always something that I can work on. And I'm actually happy that I'm not at that point anymore where I was when I was younger, that it just had the right amount of things. And I was always afraid that someone would bring more stuff into my life. Not in afraid and anxious or something, but it was annoying me that my family constantly brought things into my life that I didn't want. And then I then had to get rid of it. So that was the other way around. Anyway, what was I saying? So if you come from buying a lot of clothes like I did um, in this phase that I had, um, you really notice, you know, um, you really notice a difference to like buying just a few items per year or going months without buying anything. And it really feels amazing, you know? Like, I remember that I just had to study a lot for two, uh, one year, I think. And I came back um, and, and I didn't buy anything. I wanted to save money. I didn't want to buy anything. And then I came to some shop and I was just going through that shop and everything. All these cheap, fast fashion things, looking at them and thinking like, I don't need any of that. If I see that, I just feel annoyed and I left the store and that is, that is basically how it is for me most of the time. If I uh, go shopping, I never find the thing that I want anyway, that's why I am into sewing. So I try to find a sewing pattern and then make my own clothes because you can like derive a lot of things from one sewing pattern. So that is actually easier than to find clothes that fit me and that I like in a shop. It's actually easier to make them myself. So that's actually what I try to do most of the time. If I can, it's not possible for everything like, I don't know, sports, leggings. Yeah, buy them secondhand. I can't do that. It's just like I don't have a couple of machines. So it's, no, that stinks. Anyway, with that shift from buying a lot to buying just a few items, you can, of course, afford more high quality items. Like if you spend, spend the same money on 30 things as compared to three things, you can spend 10 times more on the three things. You can get 10 times better items in some cases if it's not like some weird useless Gucci stuff that you don't really need. Um, I don't go for brands ever. I, I couldn't care less about um, clothing brands. Um, I don't even know, you know, like if you ask me what something something is, I don't even know. Like I have uh, some linen pants here, Ugh. they're from Etsy, like from some family store. I would link it below, but I, I looked it up uh, yesterday and it doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, cool. So now you know, I have my coffee now and that's it.